A couple of weeks ago, you have seen my very first watch video of the Steinhardt Ocean 500 Titanium. But that was not my very first automatic watch. That is why today we are looking at my entry into the world of automatic watches, the Seiko SNZ F53. The Seiko SNZ F53 is also called the Baby Monster. And this is the night version in all black with white numbers and markings and red accents. Just like my Steinhardt video, I need to preface this by saying that I'm not that knowledgeable about watches yet. I just started to collect watches, so treat this video as a quick look from a beginner's perspective. So with that out of the way, let's talk about how and why I got the Seiko watch. Before I got this watch, I saw a lot of Seiko SKX watches on EDC blogs and Instagram posts. And before that, I only knew about automatic watches from brands like Rolex and Tudor, for instance, which are obviously way out of my league. So learning about Seiko and their high quality movements at an affordable price opened the door to the world of automatic watches for me. So I researched a lot about these watches and when I was visiting Jakarta in Indonesia, I actually found this used Seiko. Alright, before we go into what I like and dislike about this watch, let's go over some of the specs of the Seiko Baby Monster. Seiko 7S36 automatic movement with 23 jewels, 42 mm diameter, 22 mm lock width, stainless steel case, day date complication, 60 click unidirectional bezel, non hackable and not hand windable. So, what exactly drew me to this watch? I actually always wanted an automatic diver's watch. The very bold look, together with the black color, were the first things that I liked a lot at first glance but seeing the glass on the back of the watch finalized my buying decision. I've already read about the reliability and robustness of the Seiko movements, but I was pleasantly surprised how fast the movement starts up even with just a few shakes of the watch and how long it actually keeps running with its internal power reserve. At that time, I did not have lots of experience with watches to compare to, but after getting the Steinhardt as well, I was impressed how a way cheaper and more used watch outperforms the Steinhardt in power reserve and, let's call it, energy efficiency. And speaking of cheaper, because this watch is cheaper, I didn't take care of it as much as I should have done. This watch is pretty tough, not as tough as a G-Shock obviously, but accidentally banging it against the table or dropping it on hardwood floor didn't harm it in any way, at least as far as I can tell. But please do not try this at home. I was clumsy and I don't want to abuse this watch any further and push my luck. But not all is well performing on this used watch. And I need to emphasize used because I think that this watch might have been opened. This won't be that visible in this video, but there is some kind of fogging or oily coating from a fingerprint underneath my glass, which makes the glass appear slightly dull under certain lights. I did not see it when I bought the watch, unfortunately. Furthermore, my bezel is not as easy to rotate. It feels like there is something sticky holding onto it. It's kinda hard to describe. It's not like the bezel is just tight like a screw or something, but rather sticky to turn like someone is holding onto it from the other side. I rarely use the bezel, but it just leaves you with a slight feeling of, let's call it cheapness. This feeling continues with the crown. It's not as secure as I would like it to be. As a matter of fact, it feels kinda loose. So there is the possibility of the crown snagging onto some part of your clothing and then just being pulled out. Something that is not loose is the NATO strap inside the lock. As you can see, I use the NATO strap for one, because of styling and comfort, but secondly, because the black metal strap shows a lot of wear and sometimes actually leaves some black color on your skin when you are sweating underneath the band. 
And while this watch looks great with the NATO straps, the locks are not designed to accommodate a NATO strap. While it has the same lock width, like my Steinhardt, the tolerance between the stem and the body of the watch is so tight that you really need to manhandle the NATO strap through this part. But that's basically it. Obviously, there are some problems with the Seiko Baby Monster, but I'm not really sure if these flaws are specific to my used model or if this is a general thing with all the Seiko Baby Monsters. Nevertheless, even with those flaws, I think this is a great value and a very reliable watch. And I personally dig the look, so from my point of view, I can highly recommend the Seiko Baby Monster. So do you own a Seiko and what are your experiences with Seiko watches? Let me know in the comment section below. And like always, if you have any more questions, please comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, click the like button. And please feel free to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon so you won't miss the next videos. Thank you very much. So a couple of weeks ago I created a video explaining that I want to keep this channel sponsorship and ad free, besides the ads from YouTube of course. So I created a Patreon to cover some of my production costs, but please do not feel obliged to support me that way. I'm already very thankful and humbled that you watch my videos and possibly are subscribing to my channel. I will continue to create one video per week for you to watch for free. But if you decide to support me via Patreon, there are some Patreon-only vlog-style bonus videos about behind the scenes, how I make these videos, and previews about videos that I'm currently creating. All of your support, be it by watching my videos, subscribing to my channel, subscribing to Instagram, or supporting me via Patreon is highly appreciated. I can't thank you enough and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much.